What's up, guys? Pittsburgh White Schwartz back again. I'm joined today with Drew. What's up? And we're going to go over that one singular time I got reincarnated as a slime. And we're going to do the uh, pants door list. This is the lit most popular Japanese list, sort of adapted for English. Um, we've been, like, I know I've been talking in, like, card games and stuff, especially with, like, Ryan Wibberly, Wibs, about... Slime, he's the slime master. Uh, we did our whole set review. And, uh, you guys can definitely go and check that out, our slime set review, uh, where we had Ryan on for all the colors. And he sort of went through, like, sort of the value of the door over the wind combo and explaining how, like, the lists do similar things. However, door makes your floor a lot higher. So in the games where things aren't going well, you still have a chance to, like, actually win the game because... The lists really do a similar thing, but the door is just a lot more consistent. Um, and he's been preaching that for a long time. And again, if you go and check out our set review where we go through all the cards and Wibbs is going through and uh, rating them with us and things like that, he really preaches. And I think it's a good way to sort of get an idea of why the door is uh, more valuable in the list as a whole. But we'll get into it as we go into it. We're really going to dig into this one, I think. Because uh, Drew's been playing this a lot, too. Um, yep. Like the only thing you played since it's dropped, I think. The only thing I'm going to play since it's dropped. To be honest with you. Yeah, until uh, until you know, Dalk happens. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. That's but a thing. Slime will still be good when that happens too. So slime's still kicking it in Japan. So, um, all right, let's get right into it. We're gonna start with the zero lineup. We've got the after the battle Remo. This is the Ricky. It also has it's a true search Ricky. It's a pay one clock yourself. Search your deck for a level 1 or lower character, reveal it to your opponent, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, and then it has an additional ability, which is uh, you can ditch a card from your hand on play to bounce one of your opponent's level 0 or lower characters. Anywhere on the stage can bounce back row. Uh, the second effect is extremely fringe. The only matchup it's really relevant in is like uh, if you're playing any matchup where your opponent is fielding anti-salvage, you can pop the anti-salvage because your combo salvages and shit, your doors are yes. salvaging, so it's good like incidental effect, but you don't really care. You're just playing it because it's Ricky. Yep. Uh, and equally as important, the all to one self Chloe. Uh, this is 3,500 power on play and is ditch a character, any character. Search your deck for an anti magic mask, the 1 1 mask. We play the one from the trial deck. We don't play any of the counter because the one from the trial deck is just better for the strategy of the deck. Uh, you're not really looking to back up anything until you get to the early play turns and your early plays have hand on core, so. Not much value to not running the one one drop search that removes itself from your, the game, uh, <laughs> thinning two cards uh, from your current deck. And I think that's the strength of Chloe, right? Is like yep. she grabs a card that further thins a card that sets up for your level one combo. She comes in at three yep. five, like just a, it's, it just really feels good turn one to drop the Ricky grab the Chloe drop the Chloe ditch one of you because you run so many early play or healers in this deck yeah mind you you just drop one of those to just grab a mask and then already there you go you just took you know you mean you just compressed yourself two cards if you needed to ditch a climax mm -hmm. um, you know you can do it with this card the Rimuru to, yeah. to bounce something and just win the board you know what I mean yeah if your opponent really has something interaction. these two cards here just work really really well together I think one of the most disgusting follow-up plays, uh, like in, like you can do with the deck, is you like go first, you swing with literally anything, you like Ricky into Chloe, Chloe into Mask, swing twice, resolve two masks the next turn combo. You like double, or, you like double combo guaranteed, triple combo most games, with the deck, provided you get into the climax. It's literally just the climax that is harder to get into, so. You're yeah. mulliganing. You're mulliganing for the pants to get into your combo, but yeah, it's just a really disgusting follow up play. Three five answers most things. You don't care if it list lives or whatever. You're just trying to trade with your opponent uh, and get into your level one, uh, so that you can just start winning the game <laughs> from that point. <laughs> you can just press pause on a white Schwartz game. Yeah, but just an extremely uh, strong package of cards. Like we said, you're you're not gonna be ricking for your level one. Uh, immediately, like you would in some other deck setting up for your level 1 combo, you're going to Ricky into the Chloe, and then you're going to ditch for the Chloe into the Mask, because the Mask will get your level 1 combo the following turn. Because um, it gives you another body on board, and enables like tri-fielding and things like that. So, really powerful. 
uh, combination of cards. And the Chloe, because she's a 3-5, lets you not waste slots on, like, a field plus, like an oversizer yep. or a runner, which is really good for the deck. Lets you run all utility. Moving on, after gushing about that, we got our only red cards at level 0. We got the Tribes Princess Shuna as a te rest self uh, salvage brainstorm. And then it also, on play, you must choose one of the, your opponent's characters in their center stage, and that character gets minus 500 power until end of turn. Um, this will get better as the meta goes forward, as we get more overloaded 500 power level 0 cards. Uh, like things that do things are reverse, things that go to memory, things like JCs, like Psycono has currently in JP. The more of those that we get in English, the better this card gets, and then you already run it for red in the self-rest salvage, so... Uh, yeah. pretty damn good. And then we also got the Child on the Inside Melum. It is a normal level 0 bomb, but it's also a pay 3 on play stock swap. Stock swap, pretty so, nasty. Um, so good. Gets you out of, like, deck states that good players intentionally put themselves in, and force good players to not, like, put themselves in that deck state that would otherwise be like, I'm triple cancelling no matter what. Sort of outs. So, it's your out to that. Um, good card to grab, like when you mill zero on cigarettes and stuff like that, just to you, so you have it easier to get. Yeah. Like the way the combo works uh, lets you like run a little bit more teched out zero lineup cards that get you out of situations. So you're like playing ahead uh, when you do your combo turn, because when you mill like two level zeros, you have a lot of things you can grab that are generally very good. So yeah, and then seeing this seeing this card, you know, I mean later later in the game, especially. If you're, you know, like Slime does, sits there at 2 0 or 2 1 and just like prolongs the game, and then your opponent's compressing the whole time, and then you drop this on them. And yeah. Then you, just, you just swing with your. You yeah, know, if your opponent's pieces. like trying to ignore your level 2 board and like crashing out and just trying to like compress and force you to swing into open lanes, this tells your opponent they're not allowed to do that. Because you're the only memory deck in the meta, which is really important. You're, if your opponent's going to compress, they're going to do it with stock. And this lets them not do that non-interactive strategy of crashing into you. Because you can just rip all their clean stock away, coin flip to decompress them, and then swing in for big damage. And possibly push for a win on the spot. So it's a really important card for the deck. Uh, I would, would not drop to less than one of it. It's pretty important. No. One's very consistent. You only play this card when you need it. So... And it's literally searchable anytime, like yeah. you said. You know, your mm -hmm. cigarettes, you just whatever, grab it. you whiff with it. Yep. You just grab it. Yeah, I really like the card. really do. Moving on, next two, we got two of the Chiuri. It is a two or more other characters. It sits at 2-5, and then it is a on death. Pitch a card, check top four, add a level one or higher card from among them, put it in your hand. So it rips you into mask and level one or higher cards. Gets you into your combo, gets you into that. The big reason we run only two of it, unlike other decks that run three to four juries for deck control, is we already have a decent amount of deck control. Uh, well, not not a decent amount, but uh, we don't want to beat on our deck after we refresh first that much anyway. Uh, so what we're trying to do is get into our level one combo, which is either the mask or the Shizu itself that we can hit off this, uh, and just sort of get out of there and get into our next deck and sort of like not touch our deck a lot once we get there, because we're trying to throw a bunch of cards into memory. Uh, if we do need to proactively mill on our turn, that's what this Shizu is for. It's an okay turn zero play, because it has pay one run to back row, and has pay one sack this, top check four, add a card. Uh, this is a card that uh, Ryan has been preaching for a good bit, and we talked about in our set review. Sometimes you need proactive mill, and I agree, on your turn in main phase to move through your deck in a meaningful way, um, as well as you know, pay out stock in a meaningful way. So it's just a good tech card for those situations. Because sometimes you do find yourself there. It's uh, it. This card is the difference between a clean refresh and a bad one. So, yeah. Um, and it comes in an SR. Yeah, it does so, come in an SR. Easy one of. We love foil one ofs. Bingo. But yeah, uh, I think the the only two cheery thing throws uh will probably throw a lot of English players for a loop. But uh, don't knock it till you try it. Definitely, yeah, I definitely think, feels I right. Think, I think this card, my problem with running more than two of this card is, is like you said too, you don't want to beat on your deck a whole lot. And after your first deck, you know, when you're trying to maybe, maybe you didn't, you maybe didn't, maybe still have two Shizus left, you know, level one that you need to throw in memory. Um, this actually 
ruins your compression by sending the climaxes you're trying to dig for to the waiting room. Yeah, and, and like, I, if if you do need mill at this timing, it's easy enough to grab this card later in the game and crash it and get that mill at that timing, right? So yeah. it's like we're we're mostly using these cards. So it's like, yeah, we're running two of this one because on first deck it's good. It gets us into our combo, moves us through our first deck, whatever. But the other one is like for our the more you need it in main phase situations because you don't have to nag. You just go even. You pay yep. one, go even. So. All right, moving on. Two more tech cards here. We got the Hakuro. Uh, this is on play. All characters in your opponent's center stage get minus 500 power. So yet another card that hates on those overloaded 500 cards. And that's also Shimakai, 500 power times your board to another character. Um, only other. So this guy's only going to be swinging in for 500. Um, the Shimakai effect is very good for just helping you win lanes at any point in the game. Minus 500 again, good at for killing overloaded cards. This is a good summon off our Ramorous, and we can talk about that when we get there into an open lane, because it just helps one of your other lanes get over if your opponent is heavily yep. invested in one lane. Um, however, this is like sort of a, not a contentious card, but it's a cuttable card. If you like the second card more, I could easily see people running two of the filter. The Remir Tempest from the trial deck here. Is on play, reveal top, add pitch, and then ditch a climax, salvage. This is a card that is, this is probably the card that you're grabbing when your Shizu mills uh, two level zero cards. Probably what you get, because it's just good no matter what, all the time. Yep. Double filter, always good. <laughs> Helps you run clean. Helps you throw things away that you need to, throws away climaxes. Just two very good, solid cards. Again, if you don't, if you're local meta, you don't have a reason to really run the Hakuro, and it's not really giving you a lot of uh, extra benefit to include it in the deck, you could always add an additional TD Rimuru, because uh, the card's really good. So. Yeah, um, it's it's not bad. I We'll get into it later, but I actually cut this card for a card you guys will see later. Um, just because I don't really like, I don't like the profile of the Hakuro. Oh, the Hakuro. Yeah, it. yeah. This yeah, is I just, a, I just don't this is a flex it. spot for sure. Uh, if you, you run, feel as like, if I'm you already running. I, I I feel like the only reason to run this card, like like yeah, that's the the power pump is cool. But I don't really you don't really need it in this deck, if you ask me. I mean that's just from playing it. That's how I feel. I, and I feel like the first effect, I can just use my brainstormers anyway because that's what they do. So mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it's not all characters, but usually you're not really struggling to get over more than one lane, mm -hmm. in my experience. So, but we'll get to it later. Yeah, we can get into it when we get to those cards. Alright, moving on here. Uh, we have the level 1 combo for the deck, the Conqueror Flame Shizu. As we talked about in our set review, if you're not running this combo in slime level 1, you're you're probably playing a waifu deck, or I don't know what you're doing. Um, this combo, unfortunately, just out, like, unfortunately for the rest of the set, outclasses every single other level 1 combo in the set. So, yep. if you're, you're going to play a level 1 combo in slime, you're probably playing this. It is on attack. If you have the pants, mill top 2 cards of your deck forced. Uh... Choose one level X or lower character from your waiting room, add it to your hand, and this card gains an additional 2,000 power until end of turn. So that's on attack, this is going to swing in for 7k, and X is equal to the total level of the cards you put in your waiting room by this effect. So if you mill like two level zeros, it's level zero, level zero and a level two, it's a level two, three and three, it's like a level six or lower, those cards don't exist, but you get it. Um, and when it becomes reversed, reveal top card of your deck. If it's a demon continent character or the mask, put this card into your memory. So it's only whiffs on climaxes to go to memory. It's just free memory compression. Um, it's a card that combos and just removes itself from your deck, uh, thins your next deck, and helps it sets up for your early play condition. So there's really just no reason to not run this package. Uh, simple and very strong. Just uh, yep, it's like, just it just brain dead. Other than no what, like uh, I guess JP has the Kirito. From like the Sal Tenth Kirito, like this is like one of the best on attack selective plusing oh, profiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like one of the best ones in English, straight up. Um, yeah, it helps you. It, like it, like it. I mean, it just it massively helps you. A, know your deck if you're short on climaxes. B, compress for your next refresh. Like it. And it's not even bad to do on second deck because it's only two cards. Like right. You know, uh, you can't control it, but like, could be worse. You know? Oh yeah, but um, like you said too, it's it's not even on reverse. Which the the fact that it's not on reverse is stupid. The fact that it doesn't need to climax combo to gain its second ability to just go to yeah, memory just go to memory is because you do need two more of these in memory. So you gotta you gotta get them in there somehow. 
Um, one of the big counterplays people are doing to this deck is sort of trying to let these Shizus hang out um, <laughs> so that, to ruin your opponent's like sort of timing so they don't get as much value off the early plays. But we'll get into that when we talk to the early play. We can move on here. All right, so we got the Anti-Magic Mask. We talked about this from the Trial deck. You run four of it. This card's really fucking important. You search your deck for a Demon Continent character revealed to your opponent. Put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. Put this card in your memory. This is a 1-1 one -one drop search that removes itself from the game. Every single one you play, it gives you a strong effect and then fucks off and is gone. Compresses your deck. So it removes a card from your next deck and removes a card from your current deck. Uh, the fact that you can bond to this with Chloe is a part of what makes it so stupid. Um, and the Shizu hits on it, so... You don't even have to worry yeah. about Yushizu's weapon. The card that I really want to talk about, though, is the Creating Potions Remove. This card is probably... It's one of the most important cards in the deck, I think. It just... It, should, Maybe it, it's, it enables this deck to not care about your present your, your opponent's board state. Yeah. And the fact that you're going to have... It's always, it's always, always good for stock. You mm -hmm. really start every turn with four stock. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it. three really strong effects, although the second two are kind of the same effect. Uh, pay two rest this card heal. And then it also has rest this card. As long as it doesn't have a marker, you can choose a character from your waiting room, put it face down under it as a marker. And then the next turn, you can rest it again to put that marker from underneath this into your stock. So it compresses your next deck one if you do it on your first deck and then refresh. So it just removes a card from your deck. You then generate stock every other turn. Enables you to run on, like, run incredibly lean every single turn and still play a full turn. Um, when people meme about slime, where it's just like they have like four hand and two stock, and they play like a full turn, this card is why. Um, it lets you quote unquote recur the Shizu. Wibs brought this up in our uh, set review. So, say you pitch a card when your Shizu early play is reversed to hand on core it, you can then choose to pay two and heal, which is like the same card economy as playing another Shizu, but you know, it still stayed on the board. Um, so just something to think about. Just extra consistency, helping the slime player grind out the game. Uh, just an absurdly yeah. powerful card. And, and because you're compressed usually so many, you're sending, what, what, do, we, what do we figure, 7 to 10 cards to memory per, per game-ish? Bad um, games, average. bad games, 5 to 7. Good games, uh, typically like 7, seven to plus. 9, 7 to 11. Depends how many Ramorises you chose to like, longer games, you have more opportunities to play Ramorous more. So if the game yeah. goes long, you're going to naturally have more memory. But in a compressed deck and you're triggering climaxes when you attack, you literally can just pay them out to heal with this card and not even feel Every bad about turn. it. Every turn, yeah. And yeah, and not even feel bad about it. Because literally, like, I've, I've sat two turns just healing with this. Because like, you, you don't have to clock at that point, right? So like, yeah. you go and you're sitting at level two, you've got, let's say, two Shizus out, and you put two of these in the back, or you use... One to heal, one to compress your deck, and then you just keep rolling with it, and it just it, it just makes it just makes for a super oppressive kind of like you know level two opponent, game, yeah. Yeah, your opponent's trying their best to get over their shizus. Meanwhile, you're just healing off all the damage that they're trying to do to you, and it's just like, yeah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Only <laughs> two of it because I don't know. Have you ever played a single game where you've whiffed this card? I don't think it's possible. No. Yeah, no. I've seen I, it's, every game. Two is very consistent. Um, and you can even and, and like in in the event like the mask like like let's say it's just for the mask sake. Usually I have a, a, the the level one two at least two of the level one climax combo in my hand. You know maybe one. Yeah, you can the search the one. I search it. The mask. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll it's just a good search target. It. Is it the second the earlier you throw this card down, the more value it has, and it's a one zero. If this can hit the board your first level one turn, you're uh, looking pretty good. Yeah, you're you're in a pretty pretty damn good position. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on here. Enough gushing. So this package of cards, the Ramorous. This is, if you're, I guess, the oldest version of this card. There are two other versions of this card in English. There's the Saya from Bang Dream, and then there's the uh, Jibril from No Game No Life. This is 1-0 on play. You can choose to pay one. Choose a cost zero or lower character from your waiting room. Put it at any position on your stage and put that character into your memory at the end of turn. So noted about that, you cannot crash the character you summon and put the character in your memory. The attack must be profitable, um, so that character must either side or live uh, and be rested all the way at the end of the turn, because Encore Step comes before end of turn. Uh, yep. And the reason we run this otherwise, you know, like, kind of whatever robot 
which is just a 7-5 on your turn when it attacks, is because we're going to summon it with Ramorous. That's the only time. We never play this guy from our hand unless we're having the worst game ever. Um, we summon this card, we put it out, and then it clears its lane because it's swinging at 7-5, 8-5 with Climax, and then it just fucks off to memory and just gets out of our deck. Um... We'll talk about like other cards that could have been summoned with this like later on, like after we get through the whole deck list. Um, because I think people are probably a little confused about like why we aren't running a certain card that Japanese lists were summoning and things like that. Um, and leaning more heavily into the robot, and that's just kinda because of why the English meta the English meta being what it is and what you're actually gonna run into. Uh, the robot is more of a guarantee that you're gonna win your lane, go to memory. If you have an open lane, you usually summon the Ricky and just remove the Ricky from your deck because it's useless. Later on in the game, um, unless you're playing into like anti salvage, in which you probably summon something else. But yeah, it just uh, gives you additional memory every time you play it. It's a pay one plus that generates memory. Uh, very similar in its strength to the mask, which is why we're running three of it on the English list because we need to move quicker to create. We need to create more memory more quickly because of how much more aggressive the metagame is. Probably going to slow down pretty soon, but uh, with all these things coming, but um, yeah. uh, as of right now, it, it's still pretty fast. It also doesn't feel bad to uh, drop this card, summon your Brainstormer, you know. Um, or literally you know, anything, it. yeah, because it, it just has to live. It can be in the back row. You can yeah. summon anything, so, as long as it's cost zero. But yeah, that's why we run the robot. Um, we'll get into that later. Keep moving here. All right, tech cards. Um, so Drew and I are running this uh, because it's the English meta. The Instructor Hawkrow. This is a 1 1 anti change bomb. So it comes online even earlier. Uh, we're running this just for the mirror. Stock bomb. The mi yeah. Stock bomb. So it's hard removal. We're running this for the mirror to get around Hand on Core and for Love Live Sunshine because people are still playing that. Um, depending on your meta, depending on what you're expected to see, if you're the only slime. Or you don't expect a lot of slime, and you don't expect a lot of Love Life Sunshine, this card gets worse. Um, and you can run the 2 1 14k on attack killer, which is probably more generally better. Uh, but we've been messing with this, and we've seen a lot of results with it, mostly because of the mirror, I think. This card really shines yeah. in the mirror for removing the early play sieges. Um, but yeah, just a strong tech to remove early plays. And it's a level 1 with a soul trigger, so it doesn't feel as bad running it. Yeah, because you can just. Uh, even if you, like, sack cancel at one and your opponent starts early playing, you can still answer them, which feels yep. pretty good. Uh, which is why the 1-1 one, one anti-change bombs are so much better. We're running the Leafa counter from the trial deck, the Gobta. Um, I was... I'm always skeptical, like, skeptical of Leafa counter. Uh, but in a deck like this, where you're in deck states, where scrying that... Like, damage scrying that extra card and, like, filtering your hand is actually so powerful to get into, like, that cancel... That you don't feel bad about this, like ever, I don't think. Uh, 2,500 power, like this over the anti change, even for English, uh, is um, just a better pick. Uh, it's it saved me one too many times just because you're so compressed with the memory. So yeah, I've only ever I only ever dropped it once, but I didn't feel bad when I dropped it. I'm pretty sure it was uh, pretty sure it was to um, to save actually one of my yeah just early puts plays you puts you to a you know. 13, it puts you to 13 without anything, so the shooters are 10-5. And then with the back oh, row yeah. right here, it puts you to, uh, I can't do math, 15. So. 15, yeah. yeah. 15 will get over most things. So, And speaking of the back row, 2,000 power to level 3 is in front. You do nothing but slam early plays all game, so a card like this is very valuable. And then it has act, with draw, ditch. Filter. Draw, hand filter you every turn. Can rip you into a climax if that's what you need to push damage. Um, and just Keep otherwise filter back things if you out. Don't need them. Yeah, just a one card dig, very good uh, to just sit on the board. Yeah, I really like that card. Into the actual level threes, the, probably the star of the deck, the memories of the Japan Shizu. This early plays if you have two or more of the Conqueror of Flame Shizu. That's your level one combo in your memory. Remember that card when it gets reversed goes to memory as long as you don't reveal a climax on the top of your deck. So as long as you have two of those in there, you're good to go. You can just keep spamming this every turn. And then as long as you have two or more other characters, so if you're playing the goddamn game, you sit at 10-5 and you have a hand on court. And then you heal. Uh, to support that, you have the uh, Achieving Vindication Chion, 
which is an early play for two or less, which, let's be honest, like, unwhiffable in a deck like any modern deck that has modern deck control tools. Uh, and during your turn, if all your characters are Demon Continent, gets 2,000 power, and it is a ditch eight card heal to stock. So with only three stock, you can heal twice. Um, pretty good, <laughs> even if you only had three. But you probably have between four and five going into your first level two turn. So it is not unreasonable for you to play a Shion and two Shizus, healing three, putting yourself down to 3-0, and then recurring some combination of Shizus and Shions every turn the rest of the game forever. And you just continue to heal. Forever. <laughs> it's really, really annoying. It's really, really oppressive. It's really, really good. Nothing in English can really like deal with this other than like if they're like running the Bang Dream decks that run a bazillion Hemery bombs, like the green Hemery bombs, that's about the only thing that makes you feel bad because they all go to clock. You don't have a good way to get out there. But if you heal down to nothing and like you can sack cancel, they don't have a clock to swap you into. So yeah. you have you have ways to possibly get around that if you're lucky enough. But yeah, just incredibly strong early play package. Um, I don't think we have to like sit on it too long. This has probably been talked to death. No. And we yeah. talked about the implications of these kind of cards both in our Slime Set review and our Konosuba Set review because they have a similar card. So if you want to dig into like the sort of why these hand-on-core early plays are so strong, they, like turn any junk card in your hand into a two-soul beater. So, you know, just a very strong interaction, especially when you're running very lean. Uh, also at level three, we got this king, the hero king, Gazel. Uh you on play look at up to three cards from the top of your deck put them back on the top of your deck in any order so you can set your triggers perfectly for the turn and then choose one of your opponent's characters return to their hand and then also as act choose one of your demon continent characters and that character gets plus one soul for the turn uh for the cost of one stock so this is how you're going to bust over walls anything that's somehow controlling board better than you you're going to remove it and then you're going to scum an extra turn by setting your triggers correctly or possibly <laughs> setting up perfect lethal uh, this card is basically the perfect dirtle. Um, you're just trying to wait. You're just you're not ready to do what you want to do. You need an additional turn. Slam this down. Set your perfect triggers. Even if you trigger climaxes, you can probably move it to the last attack. So you can pay it out profitably with a gob to counter or something like that. As well as remove a lane or hit over an egg soul or something like that. Really good tech consistency card for the deck. Uh, this is a big payoff for running the door build because the wind build cannot support this card uh, without cutting cards that are too important to cut, at least in our opinion. Um, it's really hard to squeeze this card into the wind builds. Yeah, you're going to have to, what, take, take one of your changers away to play this card? Probably. Yeah, so that's, just that not... just kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very strong. Lastly, the Pursuit Milam. So this is the Climax combo that runs off the playset of the door that we are running here. It is an on-play heal. I hope you're noticing a theme here. Uh, <laughs> and then... That has this climax combo up to one time per turn at the end of this card's attack you may pay five and ditch three demon continent characters from your hand to burn two and then restand so what this does is stack a finisher all in one lane the cost seems steep but when it will win you the game you will execute it this is good for games where your opponent is very behind and you just need to close the game before they have a chance to stabilize possibly triple cancel and come back at you or when you need to push back from bad situations, as long as you come back to your turn with this card in your hand and four stock, you can tap, you can play this, attack three times, uh, ditch your whole hand, and kill your opponent. Hopefully. Um, it's there for the option. Uh, you definitely don't play this every game. You probably play this only one in ten games. However, it's what wins you those one in ten games. So we yeah. don't run the door empty. We run a copy of this card. Baseline's pretty high. It's a 10k healer, so... You don't feel bad about keeping it in your deck. Pretty simple, though. Yeah, just solid card. Does what it should when it needs to. Mm -hmm. As a quote-unquote finisher. Here's the deck all over. As you can see, uh, we're really into the memory thing. This is the first quote-unquote memory deck to come to the English meta. Um, I think a lot of people would say they'd like it to be the only memory deck. It is one of the most muted of the memory strategies uh, that are running around in Japan right now. Not to say that that doesn't mean it's strong, because it's strong in many other areas, notably that it can run so incredibly lean, you'll have regularly have no cards in hand, tap out for stock every single turn, 
then swing back up to three, but it's actually four because of the potion seller, and you'll play a whole turn on three or four cards the next turn. Um, it feels really weird to play because that's not how good decks in Weiss typically play. You always come back with a full hand. You're always generating a lot of resources, but uh, Slime sort of takes the opposite route where it sort of feels like you're not doing much of anything. However, like your opponent truly can't deal with your level of compression that they can't interact with because of memory. Uh, and then you're constantly turning your jump cards in your hand into two soul beaters with your hand on core, and you just continue to play. Um, it feels pretty disgusting. I think Drew can attest. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's not, it's not much... as brain dead as it sounds. Like, no, it's, not... it's definitely not brain definitely dead. Definitely not brain dead. You it's, have to know what you're it's... doing. Um, the, the door build, especially, I think, is a lot more difficult to pilot for your average player than the, um, than the wind build. The wind build is more straightforward. Because you just, like, play into your level 3 combo. Whereas this, you sort of play to heal. You play to elongate the game. You play to, like, memory compress, right? Yep. Like, like you're, you're not playing a traditional strategy. For the also, win with, with yeah. this deck versus that uh, wind build, you know, the, the devour top end on that mm -hmm. one. In the, in the devour top end, you're putting... You're, yeah, you're compressing by markers, with markers, but you're also... You're, also, um, leaving yourself open to all that compression is going in the way in the drop of one card on your opponent's side of the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, Whereas it, here, where you focus on memory, you uh, your opponent yep. can't remove it. Yeah. Um, so, and then, God forbid they bounce things back into your hand. That's more healers for you to play. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just uh, feels really bad bouncing back any of Slime's healers, but some decks are sometimes forced to do that to keep up uh, in damage since they have to just try to push lucky chunks through because you're regularly so compressed like we said five to seven in a bad game uh seven to nine are for a good average game if the game goes very long hitting anywhere between nine to eleven memory is not not difficult for the deck to do it literally just needs the time to do it uh, yeah the, the and longer you let them play that... uh starts to get scary yeah i was gonna say it, it to piggyback off of that it's <laughs> If, if there's there's there was a there was a game I played uh, a few weeks ago where literally I I, I ended the game with 14 cards of memory mm. just by just by looping the fairy like it, every it just, single it, yeah. be, it literally because you don't even feel bad about it at that point like I don't even I don't even care if I lose the fairy because you can just a dig it out with your compressed brainstorm yeah as long as the, you can get over something or side something uh, you yeah. can always send the card to memory so you just thin and thin and thin but yeah really strong deck. Um, Strategies like this, while uh, some people might not like them or might not like to play into them, it's nice to see something different come to English that'll be successful in the metagame. It's it's new um, and uh, interesting uh, for people to play, and they don't need to have some old set to be able to play it. So uh, if you're looking to get into the game, Slime's a great entry point. Um, just get the trial deck and get the play set, and you're good to go. And uh, nothing that's coming out, even Data Live, is really gonna hamper it that much in fact it the level two at least matches up pretty favorably but against level downs and hand on core still works with that but if you want to learn more about data live stuff you can listen to our set review but uh just know that this deck's gonna still be more than playable even after that no no doomers here <laughs> just to look at two additional cards um like drew said He's cut the Hawk Row because he's running this Dragonoid Milum. It is a more than worthy option for inclusion if you need a little extra push at endgame. It's on play reveal top. As long as it's a character, you burn one. And then when your other character attacks, this card gets 1,000 power. So it could swing in at 11-5 if you attack last. And then you're probably going to attack with it last because on reverse, pay three, Hawk Kick the card that reverses. So guaranteed two damage, quote-unquote. Um, and the fact that you can tap out and still get the effect plays into slime strategy. Very good off finisher. I know Drew's seen a lot of success with this, and he also has the SP. So, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> but yeah, cards yeah. cards really good. I, I considered running one of this myself. Um, I haven't found myself in the situation where I've needed it yet. Uh, but you know, cards definitely good. I wouldn't even say that I played it because I needed it. I'd say I played this card for the uh, option needing. Yeah, to, to like not just the because like you swing with the you swing with your Shizu or your you know your King or your uh, your um, Shinon or whatever and like you it's like okay two take two and they cancel on the first one so then you're dead in the water that's one attack all you get to one attack out of this card at least 
it gets you swing at the other two cards. It goes up to uh, eleven five. God forbid you yeah the two one on the back row. So you know you're thirteen at yeah thirteen five. And then on play you just burn one, which is nice. And then like you said, you attack with it last if you don't stick any of the damage, and then you clock kick them, and that's game if they're three five at that point. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely a good inclusion. Uh, I wouldn't feel bad putting this card in my deck, or if I saw anyone running this card, I think it is a super worthwhile inclusion in the deck if you can find the space. Especially if in your local meta, like, like Hawkrow isn't doing anything, you're not getting any value out of it. This is an easy, a little bit of extra red. If you're worried about that, if you're worried about your red fix, you can always put this in. It's a better inclusion than the anti-change counter for incidental red. So, you know. Um, also, we have the attendance check, Rimuru, when we're talking about cards that we want to summon off of the Ramorous. This is a card that gets summoned a lot in the JP meta and is still run in JP versions of the slime deck. Uh, the reason why we don't run it in English is because this card will likely not find profitable attacks past level 2, uh, whereas the robot is just more favored to do so. And because the English meta moves quicker, and we're not going to have as much time to find a time where it's right to summon this card versus the robot, uh, we're just going to go heavy and more Ramorous, more robot, because if the games are moving quicker, uh, we need to be able to generate the same amount of memory faster and more consistently. Um, so yeah. we chose to not run this card. And I think a lot of people were saying that. I know Ryan was also saying that when Slime came to English. One of the first things he's saying is, like, I don't think you run the Stock Charger in English at all. And um, after testing, proven to be correct... Uh, Ryan's Especially rarely when wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah, when when you're when you're so when you're so compressed, I don't want to be blind stalking climaxes. That too. Right? That, that's like sort of edge because like you're you're gonna pay it out, right? Like you wouldn't. Well, yeah. 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 But still, but still, it's like it's more about the power the, level. If this, yeah, if this card was a higher power level, okay. Yeah, if it had some sort of drawback because it was gonna go to memory anyway, you wouldn't care. Yeah. Because you also if would never play it from hand. You would always summon yeah. it. If it worked more like the can call one that you can at least get to seven five, I believe. Well, you do have to act two here, so like it does make it a little oh, awkward. Yeah. You're gonna have to That's summon good. it, then do your potion for the turn. So, mm -hmm. um, if someone was running this in English, I don't think I would like question it. I'd just be like, I'd be interested as to what they were seeing in their local meta uh, that was like yeah. allowing them to get, um. Allowing them benefit to get consistent it. benefit from it versus just more yeah. robot and more ramers. But yep, that's the whole list, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Drew and I really wanted to dig into it because um, uh, the set's really important. Like we said, it's a unique style of set. It's stand. It's a one of the first like really good S tier standalone sets to come out in a long time. So people can just sort of jump in with something good uh, at the beginning. So yeah. we wanted to really dig into. Uh, sort of how you play the deck, why cards are in the deck, why things are being included. Because I think, especially with a lot of people coming into the game, people are just sort of going on Encore decks, they're looking at lists, they're finding lists that win in both formats and stuff like that, and they're sort of just going with it without thinking about why cards are in the deck, and that's sort of like thinking about like how everything works as a whole package. So this video has probably gone on pretty long, I think we're like approaching almost 40 minutes, but um, an important one that we wanted to go over it. Before we dip out of here, all the links that we normally put down, Card Games Discord, Competitive Discord, uh, we hang out in these. We don't own them. Uh, but this is where the Weiss community congregates on Discord, so definitely go there if you're looking for webcam games or just to talk about the meta. Uh, Facebook groups, that's where you're going to go to buy, sell, and trade cards, as well as get reveals for both formats. Japanese ones are translated by our community, uh, which is a really great resource. Um, and then we have our Twitters for all our recurring cast. Uh, Rude, you don't have a Twitter, right? I do. I here. need to get it on here. Okay. I'll, um, I'll get it to you some point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. Pittsburgh's White Schwartz signing off. We'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.